your days in the downside for slow, lonesome agony. Now, as you lie yielding to elements, something rumbles into you. Three shapes emerge, each clad in a strange attire. Mm, another piece of filth expelled from the Commonwealth. See, I finished schedule. What did I tell you? You told us we'd find someone alive. Someday, I said you'd find someone alive someday. Just not today, I guess. But don't be glad. You know I see you funnier than you that mask. Looks like she's bleeding. It seems she still is. Then stand aside. I shall send her to a better place. Is it she? Can you people just tell? Hang on, the markings on her legs. I think she's one of them. But look at her. She's beyond our help. And we are beyond hers. Broken, shaking, starving, probably disease. Yeah. Good luck with that, uh, jam. See you back at the wagon. <laughs> Indeed. The day closed you. You have had the best an hour. Pistos. Understood. I won't be long. After the other sleep, the man turns towards you and begins unfastening his mask. <laughs> well, my friend. Don't care who you are or what you did, none of that matters anymore. All of us will equal nothing is here. You part and he gives you drink, you ate and he bathes your wounds. You hunger and he gives you food. Little by little, it helps. There, turns out you're tougher than you look. Name's Hedin. Now, come on. You sense no ill intent as he helps you up and leads you on to an old black wagon. Nothing like the stately vessels for the Commonwealth criminals through alabaster streets. Hedrin becomes you to enter the black wagon. The weather beaten wagon is as much a mess inside as out. You see the masked woman and the talkative creature taking stock of ancient windows. I'm back. And with a guest. Rosens the clasps on her mask. The Macaroni Jodaya. And as for myself, the small one struggles with his mask. Jodaya is soon assisting. Ow! I was afraid you were regarding me by the name of Root Pintail. Such pleasantries out of the way, the haunt woman then motions to the others. She glances at your side room as she speaks. Can she do it? Hope so, I haven't asked her yet. What? What are we waiting for? Yes, sir, nice to meet you and all, but tell me something. You know how to do it or what? He is asking if you're a reader. Won't from the value meaning from text. Confirm the suspicions, there is no use trying to hide them. Well then glory days, because it just so happens my associates and I, we got ourselves some nice material here for someone just like you. Reader, you still live thanks to us, we ask for something more this in exchange. Open one of those books, back there, and tell us what it says. Sorry to put you on the spot like this, my friend. The exiles in the Dedicate books in that possession. Strange book, one of several such heavy, ominous volumes. The exiles you met seem very interesting then. You pick up one of the old and heavy volumes, not in materials you don't recognize. Oh, what? A formal welcome under sign by the eight scribes. You, dear reader, are an exile of the downside, such as we, the eight who wore this book of rights. That you possess it and have capacity to glean its words is testament enough to your potential. Thus we reveal a path from this forsaken place to freedom, a homecoming in glory. The stars themselves for your guide, hear the turning of the useful sources. Seek the nearest long to it beneath the bright of eight as they align as strong. Arrive as a triumvirate, clad in the raiment of the rites, 
bearing this book obliged the voice of Tazuma. The book describes a complicated method through which a desk can return to the Commonwealth. The words swim through you might as headway get your attention. Well, friend, what does it say? But then you do not start to fade and blur. You feel your body weaken and give out. you tamper with forbidden knowledge so soon after your sentence into exile tis true what the book says you can be free again perhaps not you yourself but someone worthy of the privilege you witness now the path toward salvation you witness the rights the one way to return to glory. Though in your case, I hardly think it possible. Yet, by the grace of the scribes, it is my duty to inform you anyhow. Hello, Shay. It works. Glory God. So it's true. Yeah, but what now? And what do you know? We should be out of steel. For now, we have to put our faith in her. She will abandon us. She won't. We look upon the three of them from the end as headwind and cause her to do that. We aim to free ourselves. We will not go old and die in the downside. And now, I swear to you, when you get out of here, you're going to come with us. But first, we need your help. Show us the way. Aiden, focus all your mental faculties to us heading us. Celestial orb falls from the heavens when the time is nigh. Exiles conduct the rites as a triumvirate, or they must prove their trust in one another, not just in themselves. The three must act as one. Now plunge into the pyre with the orb and be purified. Yes, the exile Ruki has the way of it. Whoever steps into the flame is banished for a time. His or her cohorts must make do on their own. Oh, but it is not so simple. In the rites you shall face adversaries whose own freedom is at stake. Beware the aura that surrounds them, as they shall beware yours. The aura is your wrongdoing. Accept it as a part of you. Cast your aura like a stone. Correctly done. Again, just so. A glorious performance, I admit. More than I expected from the likes of you. Grasp the orb once more. The orb absorbs the aura, then the orb quenches the flame. Now I say jump. Leap with all your strength. Thus sails the orb into the waiting flame. Now snuff out the adversary's pyre whilst yours yet burns. Exactly by the book. Be gone. Blow against their pyre. 
No, you don't. Why, that was all of them. The right is complete. There, dear reader. Now you understand. Or do you? This was but a glimpse of that which lies ahead. I would tell you to turn back, cast down your hope, but all those such as you, you never listen. The others are still picking themselves up as you awaken. Well, that was something. That was our way out. So now we just follow the stars, or what? Supposedly. Reader, come, let us regard the night. Draw your reads outside where a clear night sky awaits. Now, show us, before the howlers got us set, where shall the rites commence? The gaze of the stars, gold the self star, the self star burns bright over a massive fruit of stone much further than the naked eye can see. Hmm, 200 leagues due east, the ridge of gold. According to the stars, the next flight shall soon commence here. Right, and we're supposed to be there when exactly? Very soon, according to the stars, be able to arrive in time if you make haste. Then we give her best get started. <laughs> well, this ought to be good for a few laughs at least. What do you say, Teddy? Darius comes to you, studying me. Either, do not deceive us. Where we make good use of our remaining time. What she means is, glad to have you aboard, sister. They come to me in the hand, see you inside. Freedom, the right side of you, is all to take in. Your fellow exiles await you in the wagon. In downside prayer, where, where the road ahead is forked, there is a lack of consensus about which way to proceed. I'm telling you, we ought to take the northern pass. Got an associate hold up in whole route I've got to pay a visit to. Besides, buy a new associate. Best we head to Gloomy Pool and avoid attention. And get stuck in a book while we're at it. The spirit continues as Hedwin listens for a while. But if the reader settles this, she marks the way we get us there. If the rights are meant to the of faith, then we'd best learn to trust the reader's instincts on a path. No second guessing her along the way. Can we all leave with that for now? Yeah, sure. If necessary. Then settled. Just find the way, my friend. The stars guide us through you. You may now cross a road to let you go at a certain juncture. As you pass through, through the squalid little area, 
you hear a boisterous voice coming from what he looks to be a public house. Rookie stumbles forth from it, holding something in his paw. Ah, oh, hey sister. Just wrapping up a real important exchange back there. Hang on the list for me, will you? We'll have to drop it off if we head further north. We will search a plain parcel and tell what is inside. The black wagon grinds to a stop at the base of the Ridge of Gold. The others ask to assist with making preparations for nightfall and the commencement of the light. That is for rug fashioned from a horror's hide, sends the ilk a clear message. There is a snap to step in. And as cooking things, what passes for cooking supplies on the downside having does most of the cooking. Entire family portrait. A reasonable likeness of a younger Ricky with his mother and uncle. The first exile. You know perhaps the first class name of Soliamma, the Emperor of Sar, the first exile and my liege. This chapter concerns him and those who found him on the downside. Each of us was sent to take his life. Such was the hatred for him in and around his country. Yet we found in Soldier Moor a man transformed in body, mind, and spirit, a man deserving of much more than mercy. In time, he na named us all his scribes and he became the aged. It is my greatest honor now to share with you his deeds. You know his story is to know the lies. Hey sister, I appreciate you taking us up through Hollywood back there. About that. Are you certain that parcel will fetch us in the quick pass at Slack Market? Surely we could have put Recruit some sort of rare fungus we had gone there that way. Much as I love the idea of talking to a fungus tragedy, we said we wouldn't go around second guessing our good sister decisions, right? <laughs> Daria says nothing in response, but soon changes the subject. Night will soon come along, Green Tail, we have much left to prepare. The two of them soon go about rummaging through different arrangements in the books strewn about the wagon, leaving you to your own devices. As darkness falls, you follow exiles them together, clad in the arrangements of the lights. The preparation is set, however, everything is still and calm. Soon they grow restless. Keep telling you guys there's nothing here. What a bunch of idiots we are. If we traveled all this way for nothing, I don't think we did. Look up. Is ready. Your adversaries in the rites this eve shall be the accusers. Whose ever pyre yet burns once the other is extinguished shall step closer to freedom. Now let the rites commence. The stars are aligned and your pyre burns bright. Across from your companions appear several others also clad in raiments, your adversaries in the rights. As we do, let's hope so. Be still, we have a visitor. 
the one whom should first to step forward. At last, the night winds grace us with your presence. I see that the reports of the demise had been exaggerated after all. Even I was beginning to think we were gone for good. Nobody moves, save for the man dropped in gold, one of our senses mask. Surprise the city of Glendale again? I trust you remember my face, though you must have fasted never to see it again at the last time. Never had I come so close to freedom, only for you to dash my hopes. Now, I and the accusers shall repay that affront. He shoves his mask back on and takes possessions with his comrades. It is time. From the shadows you clutch the book of rights and focus on the task at hand. Begin! None left unscathed. Take it! Have the accusers underestimated you? No, I shall not accept defeat from you again. Hear me, accuser. Stand your ground. Let your hours boil in rage. It seems that you have flustered the accusers. We have throttled them. They mean to draw us out. Then we'll have to run more circles around them. Have you any idea what that Lendl did to deserve his exile? Hmm? A daring display, flinging the orb into the flames like that. You elude banishment using such tricks. You'll have to do better than that. Sublime. Your victory is at hand. <laughs> And it is done. You have prevailed. Rejoice then in your single fleeting victory. Guron Salashe. The deceit may have earned your whole victory, but know this. The accusers will not forget your wickedness. And when next we meet, we will rue the day. Bask now in the wisdom of the scribes. The exiled Jodariel has gained enlightenment. Only the enlightened can regain their freedom. Hmm. We have withstood worse nights than this, though just strange. Do you think I rush to one four to the other can rush again right away? After banishing our adversary, Jodara instantly recovers all her stamina. The demon scribe bestows his favor. After the rites, the accusers disappear into the darkness. As you return to the wagon, in the still night sky you see a single star burns brighter than the rest, beckoning you onward.
Well, my friends, what can I say? The rides are real, and we are in. They get in our new club. Nice up the agenda, keep chasing star until we're free. Until we're free. Until we're free. Hey, here! Sounds fine. Might as well be us instead of Lebel back there. Anyway, get us better start the party. As the others go about their business, Hedwig turns to you. Either come up with me, or the stars are still out. You and Hedwig walk in silence for a time before he speaks up. You have questions. Come, ask away. We need you in the own for this for the long haul. Hedwig wishes to know if anything is troubling you. You ask Edwin why he and his companions did not invite you to participate in the rise first time and relied only on your guidance. He maintains eye contact and his smile. Good question, my friend. We're going to have a lot of time to discuss that and many other things. Making you a deal. Read the stars for us again and I'll tell you all about it on the way. You sense he speaks truly as he beckons toward the fading dark above. The gaze of the stars. The more the dusk star. The dusk star burns bright over an ancient spring in the Moor Valley. That's a long way north and west. We'll see if this old way can split for it. Then he turns to the others. How is it going, Yuki? Team's thread was clean. Started the jody? No sign of hours. Everything is secure. Good. Then get some rest. We're headed to the spring of Jamwa. At dawn, we're off. You find Ruki rummaging in the corner of the black water. Hey, sister, you know what? It's good having somebody else around beside this, too. So, come to think of it, there's something I want to get your take on, and you have to promise to tell me honestly. Did you say the what I mean? Uh, he hesitates, trying to find the words. Ah, look. What I'm trying to say is. Uh, you sense something serious is troubling him. It's about my mustache. I've been getting some conflicts with boss about it. Would you say, my mustache, that it makes me look a bit, you know, ask of us? Ricky wishes to know if you think his mustache suits him. You stress that Ricky's mustache looks perfectly fine. It means right at you. Good in angry more, sister. I know straight away that you're a real judge of character. Anyway, got to check the rules again for mice. See you around. He bounced off. Out of the way again. What the game does one hope for the next fight? It's the time of management. Now, thank you. Bye bye.